What's happening everyone? Devin from Debo's Fishing and I'm excited to share the new line of stencils that Do It offers. Uh, currently there are four different packs that they have right now, a jerk bait, a craw, a panfish, and a detail. Uh, and these are pretty cool because these are all made to fit the blanks that Do It offers. So for example, the jerk baits here, uh, you're not gonna get a jerk bait blank here where it's you know too short and won't cover the whole blank. Uh, the cool thing about these stencils is they're made to fit the crankbait blanks that Do It offers. So same thing with the craw, panfish, et cetera. And you can mix and match these. So for example, if I do uh, one of these jerk bait stencils, I can take pieces from this little panfish and use this as texture, you know, get creative. Uh, I know when I first started using stencils, uh, it's a real easy way to get good, crisp, clean lines and really get a lot of detail put into the crankbait. So don't be afraid to mix and match these and heck, why not? Let's go ahead and paint one up. Let me get this all cleaned up and we'll paint a craw. Okay, just spent the last couple minutes getting this ready for the stencil work. So I put a blue layer on top and that's a pearl just to kind of contrast against some of the things that we're gonna be doing. It's, uh, and then on the bottom of it, instead of putting a white opaque base on all of this, I actually left the bottom transparent. So I didn't put any white on it. Um, I used a trans transparent blue so you can kind of see through some of it. It just gives it a different little dimension as opposed to the whole thing being one solid color of blue. So we're gonna go ahead and start the stencil work here. Now the first important thing about using stencils that I learned the hard way is making sure that the stencil is tight to the bait. And what I mean is if you don't have all the little edges of this pushed down uh, exactly, if you've got some of it sticking up like this and you spray your stencil, it's gonna leave a shadowing effect on your bait. So if you want real crisp, clean lines uh, like we're gonna do for this craw, wanna make sure we've got the stencil down and I'm spraying straight down onto it. I don't wanna spray at an angle where it can get under this spray straight down. Another thing to think about with your stencils is make sure you've got a reference point. Um, so when I line this up, I wanna make sure these look on, look the same on each side. So the first part of this little crawfish, uh, I guess turn, kind of where the gill plate would be, I'm gonna line that little piece up with the gill plate on my blank. And then the back of this little craw uh, stencil has kind of the little tail piece uh, of the body. And I'm gonna line that up with the hook hanger on back so hopefully I can get both these sides to line up that way they look symmetrical. Okay, I've got some regular black paint here loaded into my cup and this is gonna give us good solid dark black lines for the crawfish. And the fun part with these is you can get as, you know, kind of crazy as you want doing transparent colors so it barely shows it to doing like I'm doing a hard opaque line here. I'm gonna try to get this lined up the best I can. Okay, I'm gonna test my black on some of this paper towel, make sure we're flowing good, flow is good, okay. Now I'm gonna spray straight down onto this and just kind of follow these lines. I don't wanna gloop it up or hold the airbrush in one spot too long. I wanna move along these lines, good uniform strokes, and make sure I'm covering all this evenly. When everything goes right, you should have a good, solid, clean black line just like that. Now in between each time you're using a stencil, you've got to remember that I'm taking this piece of paper and laying it on my bait. So one thing I learned the hard way is make sure this is very, very dry every time you put the stencil on because if this is still kind of wet and I want to add different details like these little spots you can see here on this, um, I'm going to add some texturing. I lay this on while it's still wet. I'm going to smudge it and mess up all my work. So uh, you can use a hairdryer if you want. I use a heat gun. It works a little bit quicker. I'm going to go over this in even strokes. Now the big thing with a heat gun is there's a lot of heat here, a lot of power. You don't want to leave this in one spot because you will melt the plastic. These things get super hot. So keep this moving across the bait. Uh, I usually do it for 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how thick the paint was. Uh, this wasn't a real heavy layer, so you can see this stuff dries pretty quick. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. But in between each layer, make sure you hit it with a heat gun and dry it out. Okay, we're gonna do the other side here. Now, not only do I wanna make sure my bait's dry, but I wanna make sure the paint on the stencil is dry because uh, this one stencil has to do the other side. So I'm gonna flip this over. That's gonna give me the same look. And I usually just pat it off on a paper towel. Uh, as I said, we used a real thin coat here, so it dries pretty quick, but looks okay there. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing to try to match this up. And this is the hard part about stencils uh, is trying to match these up to make sure they look symmetrical on each side. And again, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but try to get it as close as you can. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing. Test my paint over here to make sure I'm spraying. Remember, good even strokes on this. Don't let the paint sit in one spot too long or it'll pool up. You'll get like spots, it can run. 
So just a good even coat like this all across it and you should get some good hard solid black lines just like that. Okay, so for our next step, we're gonna add the little lines that uh, separate the different pieces of the crawfish. There's a lot of different ways. You can really even, and I honestly do this quite a bit, um, I will use just a flat edge, and we can even show that here. I can do a couple different looks. Um, remember, these, these patterns are just kind of a, a guide, right? You don't have to use exactly what's on this one. I could mix and match, and I could use the top piece to this, right? It looks a little bit different than that one, or I guess this is a better example where it's kind of curved. You could use that for the belly. Mix and match these, that's the fun part of it, or you can draw your own you know, kind of lines and such just using a straight edge, and this is really using all of the stencils. So when I do these lines that are gonna kind of separate the, uh, the pieces of the crawfish body, I always start at the back here and then work my way forward. If I start forward and then work my way back, again, I'm gonna be smudging and going over wet paint. So I'm gonna start at the back just like this, and I'm gonna do just a light line to kind of give a hard line on the top and then shadows kind of off to the side. So always check your paint. You don't want to ruin your masterpiece. Check that and I'm going to do a light line just across the back of it. And that gives a really neat shadowing effect there. You can see where it's got a hard line on top where that, that paint kind of sprays uh, and then you've got shadowing on the side. Now, it's fun here because see this line, it didn't exactly match up with the crawfish body that we have here. Some people don't care, some people leave that, but there's some cool little side pieces, uh, if you can see here, on the side of the stencil. Now you could use these for you know, pieces of the craw body, or you can have little spots like this where they didn't quite meet, and I can use a real thin piece of paint, a little thin layer of paint, to kind of connect those, just like that. So you can see where that little curved piece comes up, I've connected those together. And again, it really doesn't matter, you can leave them where they don't touch, uh, that's where the creative process comes from. Now another important part about the stencil is you can see how much spray I've got on the stencil here. When I'm stenciling this, I want to have most of the spray, most of the time, um, on the stencil. So when I'm doing lines like this, what I mean is when I'm spraying my stencils, I'm spraying mostly on the side of the stencil here. See my line? Mostly like that. And what that's going to do is leave a nice, clean little shadow as opposed to spraying directly on this line. You notice it'll kind of give a hard, like edge to it where it doesn't fade as much. Now maybe that's the, the look that you want to achieve sometimes, uh, but generally with stencils, I'm using the stencil as a guide and spraying mostly on the stencil. So, and then as I get toward the top, I'm actually going to use the crawfish pieces that are on the stencil. So again, mix and match, make it your own. I'm going to spray these lines using the stencil. There you go, two completely different looks. You notice using the lines of the craw on this, it just gives a straight line, right? As opposed to using the side of a stencil, which kind of gives that shadowing effect. So the shadowing effect is cool because it looks like it's a piece of the crawfish body kind of stuck under. Uh, so it really just depends on the look that you want. And again, you can connect these, you can leave them, uh, make it your own. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is add a few pieces of texture. And again, mix and match these, the one that I was talking uh, about earlier, this one would look kind of cool. So you know on the, the front of the bait here where it's kind of plain, I'm gonna use just this little piece here. It almost looks like cracks or little crevices. I'm gonna spray lightly just up here where it's completely blank. You can see that? That's just a cool little extra piece of texture. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of shadow. So with crawfish, I know some people uh, would rather have the crawfish going one way versus the other, but I think the fish are really focusing on these colors. So I'm just gonna darken a little bit just in here by the cheeks with this black. Just to kind of blend all this. And again, uh, when I darken up and use this black, it's gonna give it a little bit darker blue appearance on it. And I'm gonna darken the nose and the eyes. Now another fun thing to do is just to give this a little bit of texture, uh, I don't know if you can see here, but when I did the blue, um, I was just flicking the paint. So just doing this, adds little drips and drops, and you'll notice on a, a crawfish, uh, on the claws and on the body, I've got all these kind of little spots and imperfections. So just to darken up the top of it, I want this top to be kind of a dark blue. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of this black splatter, and I'm just flicking the airbrush. That's all I'm doing, just to let a little bit of that paint out. 
and darken it up. So there we go. So you can see I've added some texture in there. I've added my crawfish lines. Just a fun, simple little pattern here and then the bottom. So just to add a little bit of texture on the bottom of this, kind of a little bit of another dimension, the bottom of the crawfish is oftentimes lighter in color. So I don't wanna do anything too crazy. I've got already that transparent base coat there of light blue. I'm gonna take some of this pearl, this is go-to pearl color, and add just some dots on the bottom. And I want these dots to be clean. I'm not gonna flick it. Put some dots on there. Now, you'll notice they're hard to see until you start getting that pearl in the light and they really pop. Just to make it a little bit different, I'm gonna make the belly of this, the front of it, just a little bit pearly. There we go. So just a little bit of a different texture to it. Again, you could leave it the same color. Uh, you can get real crazy with this, or you can go with something simple and fun like this. All right, we got the bait all clear coated, added some hooks and some fun Cosmo eyes, and kind of put an interesting twist on the black and blue craw. Now, using the new stencils from Do It, we added a simple craw pattern on the side. Really easy to do, but again, just make sure you have those stencils very tight to the bait to get some good, crisp, clean lines. The other fun part about these stencils is you can mix and match. Uh, we used textures from some of the other stencils. You can mix the craw lines, have fun with it. Again, the cool part about painting your own baits is you can make it completely your own, nothing else that anybody has. So whether you're new to airbrushing or you've airbrushed for a while, give the new stencils from Do It a try. It's a fun way to add different texturing and different looks to baits that you just can't get with freehand stuff. So thanks for watching the How We Do It series and stay tuned for more.